वेलकम बैक व्यूअर्स वंस अगेन वॉम ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम शांतनु मुखर्जी एडवाइजर नेट स्ट्रैट लेट मी रिमाइंड यू वी हैव एम्बेसडर टी सी ए राघवन डिस्टिंग्विश डिप्लोमैट विद अस वी आर डिस्कसिंग पाकिस्तान इन आवर कॉन्वर्सेशन सीरीज हेयर एंड इन द सेकेंड सेशन आई विल डिस्कस विद हिम और वी विल डिस्कस विद ईच अदर अबाउट the external relations of pakistan its foreign policy whether its diplomacy is on the wane does pakistan stand isolated in the global community with the fatf that is the terror things it is a pariah state in the last 76 years of its existence what is the status latest with an experience of ambassador tc ragwan these are some of the things which we are going to discuss to begin with the recent uh visit of prime minister modi to the united states because we always know from the 65 war 71 bangladesh the kissinger nixon all support to pakistan and we have we are seeing a huge bonhomme emerging between us and india by the prime, indian prime minister's visit there so many deals the kashmir not being discussed and other things it's a complete departure from the past trend i am watching pakistani newspapers they are they are they are muted in the sense that they are they are unable to react on it maybe they are struggling to come to terms how to react that they have stolen a march except very very feeble reactions till now so in conversation would like to know from you based on your experience and all how do you read it has it rattled pakistan does it have to recalibrate its policy with the united states is it going to make some concessions to it what is the status sir well to my mind uh, as you say the reaction has been somewhat uh, muted but uh, when one studies it uh, one can make out two or three broad uh, trends which underpin that uh, reaction uh, the first is uh, uh, the sense as you said of uh, feeling slightly bewildered because uh, they had always uh, many of them have grown up with the impression that uh, pakistan is very much part of the uh, us led alliance system uh, i think that view has changed and there is a greater understanding today that Uh, global geopolitics is in flux uh, and new new trends have uh, emerged and because of those trends uh, india and the united states are on converging uh, paths in terms of uh, how they see their uh, interests while okay. at the same time uh, china has emerged as a countervailing force and it is in pakistan's interest uh, to converge uh with uh, china to the extent uh, possible so there is this understanding i think uh, of in pakistan of this broader geopolitical uh, shift given that i think they are still uh, concerned uh, about the drift in pakistan us relations i think uh, their main uh, worry is uh, the 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 steady decline in pakistan us relations uh, over the past decade and i think they see the strengthening of us india relations to some extent in that context also they do see it in the context of china but most of all i think their effort is that we must try to steady the course uh, in our relations with the united states that is the pakistani uh, view while at the same time they understand that india because of its economic uh, Uh, position because of its larger strategic uh, footprint uh, has certain uh, has a certain importance which they will not be able to compete uh, uh, in in terms of the wider region but in south, in south asia i think they are they are quite clear that they have to try to uh, maintain their position uh, use the china relationship uh, to leverage uh, the regional situation in their Uh, favor and finally try to improve relations with the united states to the extent possible you say improve relations uh, how do they improve i mean is there a quid pro quo there's some deal how do they do it what leverage can they exercise i don't see anything well i think we should never forget that 
uh, you know, Pakistan is a country of 230 or 240 million Correct. Uh, people. It's the fourth or fifth largest country in the world. That's right. Uh, it has nuclear uh, weapons. It is located in a part of Asia, uh, which is uh, geopolitically uh, of great uh, importance. So all countries will always give a certain uh, importance to what is happening in Pakistan. Uh, so it is never going to be the case that Pakistan will become a marginal uh, factor in regional uh, geopolitics. It won't work like that because uh, whichever is the outside power looking at the region, they will say, see a country of 230, 240 million people, uh, which is fundamentally very unstable, but it has nuclear uh, weapons. Uh, so they will try to see what they can do to establish a minimum relationship with it. And that applies equally to the United States. Now, talking about the United States and I'll deviate for a minute for my clarity's sake. Now to maintain balance, you say China, do you think Russia will try to step in to do something? I mean, in terms of uh, a renewed warmth, more warmth to strike a balance? Uh, with, uh, uh, with with Pakistan, like you say that it's a regional thing, it doesn't deserve to be the ignored, it will not be ignored, whatever it is because of its population size or whatever. I think so. I don't think it will, uh, Russia will step in in any immediate sense, but but Russia will always remain interested uh, in uh, in Pakistan because it is part of the hinterland of a region with which Russia is deeply engaged with, that is Central Asia. Uh, so for that factor alone, it will always remain interested in uh, Pakistan. And uh, how things will play out in the future is more difficult to predict because Russia presently, its own domestic situation and its own commitments vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine and the situation it faces with Europe and the United States, uh, one, one can... One can uh, only make a guess about how much it will be able to look at Pakistan in particular or even at South Asia in those uh, circumstances. How much excess uh, capacity or redundancy does it have uh, to, do, to deal with that? But I don't think in the calculation of any major country, whether it is the United States, whether it is Russia or for that matter in any power, we will ever have a situation where Pakistan will not exist. Pakistan will oh, always is, remain is, a factor that is, that is. in uh, the regional and geopolitical approach of all the major powers in the region. That's true. That that will continue to be. But coming back to this uh, Indo-US relations uh, in light of Prime Minister's visit now, there had been many pacts signed on, say, technology, military, defense cooperation, and so many things. Do you think Pakistan, like you said, that... It cannot be ignored. It will try to recalibrate. It will try to renew its policy, uh, uh, make fresh attempts to uh, reach out to the United States. Could it offer, say, number one, with the military point of view, offering some bases? I won't know. Pardon my ignorance about it. Or try to offer some, uh, uh, invite some technological deal or anything where U.S. might relent. Why I'm saying this is that U.S. had gone on full hog in giving India the space in this visit, what we can make out from the media. It was a sweep, you know, it's a complete sweep. But at the same time, I noticed that Pakistan was irked by the joint statement of the two leaders where it said that Kashmir was shown in a negative light or Pakistan was shown in a negative light and there had been some protest Demarsh issued and the American uh, deputy ambassador was summoned. Some kind of things were happening. I mean, some protests, a mild protest, but there was some protest. And U.S. immediately came, like in the earlier times, what I made out as a layman, is that, well, uh, nothing has happened. And yes, we value the friendship, we value this thing. So do you think that U.S. on its part can also think of trying to casual Pakistan lest it remains irked or remains unhappy with the U.S., the India emerging one harmony? 
well as i said no no power is going to uh, you know forget about pakistan it will remain a remain a factor and diplomacy consists in uh, managing different relationships uh, and making sure that one relationship remains insulated uh, from the other uh, even though they may be on contradictory uh, contradictory uh, trajectories uh, so yes the united states will continue to strengthen relations with india they will see that these this strengthening of relations is uh, being viewed with uh, with great concern in pakistan but that will not stop them but at the same time they will try to reassure pakistan that that, uh, that, that is this point. is not yeah. a zero sum yeah. game because this is what diplomacy really is all that about engage pakistan that you that they engage pakistan yeah. that they try to assist it that they try to nudge it in a uh, direction which they think is helpful in terms of their own interests because after all Uh, the united the united states and pakistan uh, were strong allies for over half a century there are yeah, many people yeah, that, there are many people in the united states system that's right uh, who Absolutely. who understand that yeah. and who also feel that the pakistanis uh, should not be put into a position uh, where they lack all hope altogether because that will push them even closer to uh, to china so in that framework uh, the united states will always uh, try to engage with pakistan Uh, and reach out to it uh, and try to see what it can do with it notwithstanding the very strong convergence in relations with india uh, that it has presently of late we have been noticing i mean it's a very it's not really fair to attack the pakistan foreign office and you belonging to the diplomatic community would understand it better we saw that the you talked about you define diplomacy we find that pakistani foreign ministry today they headed by milawal bhutto and his deputy hina rabbani and all everything are perhaps there's some weak streaks when they are handling with other countries as well it somehow has never been i would say a weak team in the past and do you think they will be able to make up for all the negativities that had been projected which the other countries had better of pakistan it's not easy because in the end your external profile depends on your domestic situation and given the kind of chaos which exists uh, mm. today in pakistan uh, there is no way they can uh, Uh, that any country when dealing with pakistan can overlook that uh, okay. factor yes uh, no matter how much they sugarcoat what they are saying but pakistan's uh, uh, internal situation uh, has a inevitable impact on its external position uh, and i think uh, there is no getting away uh, from that because their economic situation the the internal security situation which you uh, which you mentioned Uh, and most of all the very fragile political uh, situation all suggests that this is a country which is going to remain deeply engrossed in its domestic affairs uh, and uh, so to that extent its really? external situation is not uh, as it would have been if it was stable if the economy was in a better position not the position. ideal not the ideal it's certainly far from the far ideal far from being ideal that is it now in light of this visit and we were, we discussed in detail thank you for that this india pakistan relations as you know they are at an all time low there's no um, only a couple of days ago the indian diplomat there in islamabad was summoned and protest made about these are very routine you may have noticed that about the firing loc and these things and which say Nawaz Sharif in position, assuming that he comes back and he's we discussed it in the first part of our session. There's going to be uh, an abatement in, say, cross-border terrorism, on raising of the Kashmir issues, and other bilateral ties, or it's going to further escalate. As purely, I'm talking about the bilateral ties. 
between India and Pakistan, the contentious issues which always dominate. Will there be some maturity on part of Nawaz Sharif? And like you said, that uh, we also have to reach out to them and take the first move perhaps. So what do you well, think about Well, that? in my view, it's very difficult to predict what will happen uh, tactically. Yeah. But in general terms, I would say that uh, in case Nawaz Sharif uh, uh, becomes uh, prime minister or if he is the major power uh, as is likely to be uh, in Pakistan, I think it is a helpful and a positive sign uh, for India-Pakistan relations. Yeah. And I think it is important that we look at it in that positive uh, framework because in the end we have to deal with Pakistan as a neighbor. Uh, and the fact is that in neighboring country relationships, uh, there is never going to be a, uh, a static situation. There will always be dynamic uh, changes. And the question we have to answer is that do we want a neighborhood which is more stable, uh, where you have minimum uh, diplomatic and stable relations with your uh, neighbors? Because that enables you to look at your other uh, other longer term quite national right. development uh, quite right. quite uh, right. goals. So I would say if we see signs uh, of uh, uh, positive elements coming to power in Pakistan, we should do what we can to, to encourage it. Uh, I think the mistake would be to look at the last four or five years as constituting some kind of a new normal in India-Pakistan relations. India-Pakistan relations have historically followed a cyclical uh, path. There are ups and there are downs. Yes. Uh, there is never a stable position, which is then you, which 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 you can say is characteristic of India-Pakistan relations. It's never a, a position like that. So I don't think we should see the last three or four years as being typical of India-Pakistan relations. And as I said, as the larger power, as the more stable power, uh, it is in our interest to try to impart greater elements of stability. Uh, to the relationship with Pakistan, even while we are cognizant of all the difficulties and challenges that exist. You got it. Very right. So now in this context, sir, whether we need to consider reviving the back-channel diplomacy or the track two, to try to engage something with somebody in the armed forces or in the polity, just to bring in more of pacifism, and less of this thing in the interest of both the countries? Well, I think uh, at some stage we will have to think about uh, uh, the, the minimum stability required because right now you have a relationship uh, which is stable but at a very low plateau. Uh, the ceasefire has by and large held, which is a good development, but uh, you do not have high commissioners in place. Your diplomatic relations have been downgraded. Uh, there is no trade. There is virtually no cross-border movement of uh, people. Uh, I think these elementary things have to be attended to uh, at some stage because we cannot say that this stability at such a low plateau uh, is sustainable. It is not. And if it is our intention and if it is in our interest, if we feel it is in our interest, to have uh, stability in our relations, uh, in our neighborhood, we should attend to those minimal uh, things. Minimal, so, that is so I would say, yes, back channel is important and other contacts are important. But I think the formal, uh, the formal the nuts basics, and bolts, the, basic, the basics, basics uh, are be, even more important. That's right. You have, you have made a point. Yeah, basics, the fundamentals need not be ignored. And in the last five, six years, you say that we should move forward. That is what you meant. And leaving it, yeah, that's that's a good because I, as a security professional, my study is I hope I am uh, uh, on course while making this. That uh, there had been less uh, terror attacks say, in Kashmir or less of a rhetoric on Kashmir and that kind of things. Maybe that they were saddled with their, their domestic problems, beleaguered with this and economic problems as well there at this thing. Or I must also like to credit our security uh, and security establishments and the agencies for foiling any attacks and all. 
So with Nawaz Sharif at the helm or anybody for that matter in light of our relationship, growing relationship with the US, I see that there would be less, I mean, I, I can't predict really, like you say, that there'd be less of violent acts on part of Pakistan targeting India. Well, in my view, we have to look at it in more fundamental terms. Uh, when we deal with Pakistan, although all countries are equal and there are sovereign, there's a there's a basic idea of sovereign equality which underpins modern mm. uh, diplomacy. Yeah. Uh, but uh, having said that, the fact is that these are not equal relationships. They are imbalanced They're relationships. Imbalanced. Pakistan is not our equal in any sense. Because if you look at the size of the country, you look at the size of the economies, you look at the stability of the countries, uh, in that sense, we are uh, we are a much larger and much stabler power dealing with a smaller uh, neighbor. And I think that factor has to underpin our relationship with Pakistan rather than dealing with it as an equal uh, power. It's not a, hmm. it's not a uh, relationship between uh, equals, equals. Uh, which means that initiatives always have to come from you. Uh, and this has been, in fact, the pattern in the past whether you take the NDA-1 or whether you take uh, uh, the subsequent uh, UPA governments or indeed you take the first term of NDA-2. Uh, it is not as if problems were not there. And certainly the threat of terrorism has been an ever-present factor in the last quarter of a century, perhaps even more. But that has not prevented you from taking initiatives to try to stabilize the, mm. uh, the situation. So we cannot tie ourselves into a position, and this is my view, uh, we cannot tie ourselves into a position uh, uh, which would amount to that unless X, Y, Z happens, I will not do anything. Because that means that you are then presuming your entire approach as not having any initiative or any agency left. I think agency will always be have to remain from the Indian side. Yeah, agreed. But I think the, uh, you say about the population, we are bigger in size and uh, larger in population, square miles or whatever. But judging by history, the pinpricks and everything right from 47, and then uh, you have the 65, and 71, Cargill in 99 and everything we've seen. So it is uh, not really possible for the governments or uh, the agencies to take Pakistan for granted. We are always on guards, isn't it, that they do it. Um, hoping, of course, there's a cautious uh, optimism that we find that uh, something can be done with the new dispensation there, which may be in the offing, that or by the prescription you said that we have to take a lead. Uh, better sense prevails and we live in a better harmony and it's doable, Ambassador? Well, I don't think we have to be, uh, we, we should never suspend uh, disbelief. And uh, I don't think uh, taking initiatives means that we close our eyes to the possible dangers which exist. It's and certainly, the history certainly. of India-Pakistan relations is a history of various That's threats right. and dangers. Yes. So I don't think we can ever exclude uh, that factor. But I do think we need to look at it in a broader framework. Uh, and that broader framework is of neighborhood relations. Relations between neighboring countries, especially when you have a large neighbor dealing with a smaller country, right. are always very difficult. And in the past, while India-Pakistan relations stand at a different level uh, and to some extent uh, uh, stand by themselves, but if you look at our relations with Nepal or Sri Lanka or in fact any of our neighbors, uh, there have always been periods of great difficulty. That's right. But the point is not to be, not to, uh, not to bind ourselves into a position where you are not in a position, uh, where you are not in a situation hmm. to take steps to improve the situation. We should not be rigid. What we should not be rigid. rigid. I agree. Okay. Yes. No, I just got it. Thank you very much for this. The very vital advice. And I would request you to, as far as external relations are concerned, Ambassador, to wrap up with what would be the likely Chinese stance in view of the Indo-US renewed relationship by Prime Minister's visit, 
vis-a-vis China, Pakistan? Well, I think uh, the uh, you know the the China, U.S., India, and to some extent Pakistan. We see all these relations as forming one complex whole, but it's always useful to remember uh, that India-China relations, just like India-Pakistan relations, to a great extent are sui generis. We had difficult times with our relationship with China in the past when we also had difficult times with the relation with the U- U.S. simultaneously. Uh, it is not as if uh, the uh, better relation with the U.S. has prevented uh, an improvement in India-China relations in the past. Similarly, Certainly. you have had good relations with Pakistan and you have had bad relations with Pakistan. And while at the same time, you may have had the opposite set of relations with uh, China. So, so your you relations... Necessarily, with, they don't matter. They necessarily, it's, it's they don't impact, impact each other. And I think it's good to keep this in mind That's that right. these are... Uh, sui generis, your problems with Pakistan, your problems with China, and not necessarily always view it in the wider prism of what is happening with the United States and what is happening with other countries. Thank you, Ambassador Raghavan. It has been a very, very educating session, Uh, both the internal challenges, what you explained so lucidly, as well as the external relations you dealt very comprehensively. Thank you very much. I am sure The viewers were equally benefited. And thank you, everyone, for your patience and presence with us and uh, joining us with this. We hope to get back to you with more exciting episodes in the near future. A warm thank you to all of you from Natstrat. Bye-bye. Thank Thank you you very much, Thank you very much. Thank you.